play the instrument, he knows how to go up and down the scale of life, and that is because he is a mighty man of valor. He is called in the Hebrew, Gibor Chayil. Now this means that he was a master of the spirit. He had used his young years in prayer and devotion, and in particular he was a man of war. What does it mean that he was a man of war? He was a man of war, says the Holy Tsar, in the war of the Torah. He was able to move back and forth across the entire gamut of the Torah. And he was Navoyna Davar, he was a person of understanding. And this is the description of Ish To'ar, a man of fine appearance, a man spiritually of tremendous, outstanding stature. This is the young David when he first comes to Shaul. We cannot look at David HaMelech in isolation from the Torah tradition on which he stands. Before we come to the actual remedy of David HaMelech himself to the curse of depression, let us go back to the Torah and consider some of the occasions when healing is mentioned in the Torah. Because we see from the very start that the healing of the Torah is not only physical healing, but it's also a spiritual healing. The very first time that healing is mentioned specifically in the Torah is in the story of Abraham, Avinu, Abraham the patriarch, when he is forced to go to sojourn with Abimelech, the king of the Philistines. And Abimelech sees Avram arrive with this uh, mysterious woman, Sarah, and Abimelech immediately uh, kidnaps her. And uh, the creator of the world comes to Abimelech in the night time and says, you've done wrong in taking this woman. She's a married woman. And all of Abimelech's household becomes smitten with some uh, morbid condition. And God says to Abimelech in the dream that only Abraham, the prophet, can bring you healing because he will pray for you. And through the prayers of Abraham, you will be healed as long as you send back his wife. So we see that the illness that afflicted Abimelech was not a purely physical illness, but it was an illness that was caused by a moral flaw, by the flaw of violating the fundamental code of law of all humanity, the law of the seven Noahide laws, that you do not take a married woman from her husband. And it's on account of this that Abimelech was smitten, and only when he would rectify the moral flaw would he be able to be healed. Well, the first reference in the Torah to healing for all Israel comes in the parasha that we read just over two weeks ago, parashat B'Shalach, after Israel passes through the Red Sea, and the people of Israel come in their journeys into the wilderness, to a place called Mara, just three days after journeying into the wilderness, they come to a place where the waters were bitter, and the people cried out to Moses, saying, what shall we drink? And Moses cried out to Hashem, and Hashem showed him a tree. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. And then the talk continues. There he established for the nation a decree and an ordinance, and there he tested it. He said, if you will hearken diligently to the voice of Hashem your God, and do what is just in his eyes, give ear to his commandments, and observe all his decrees, then any of the diseases that I placed upon Egypt I shall not bring upon you. For I am Hashem, your healer. We see from this passage that was said to the children of Israel before they came to Sinai, before they received the Torah, there at Marah, where according to tradition they received the first mitzvot of the Torah already some weeks before Matan Torah, before the giving of the Torah at Sinai, we see already here that the Torah is presented to us as a pathway of health. If you will follow this code, if you will follow these laws, I will not put upon you the diseases I put upon Egypt. Israel knew those diseases. 
All the diseases that they knew from the plagues of Egypt, God promises, if you keep to the Torah, the Torah is a preventive pathway. A preventive pathway, the pathway of Torah health care through the mitzvot. And again in the parasha, which we read just this last Shabbat, towards the end of parashat Mishpatim, the conclusion of God's lesson in Mishpatim to the great uh, detail of the Sinaitic Code is you shall serve Hashem your God and He shall bless your bread and your water and I shall remove illness from your midst. Here we are learning that through the very bread and water, the basic fundamentals that man lives are if we, shall fa- if we shall serve Hashem, God will remove illness from our midst. So this is the tradition from which David became the king of Israel is coming. A tradition that is explicitly a tradition of preventive health care. And one of the mitzvot of this Torah is to wipe out the name of Amalek. This is indeed perhaps one of the most important commandments in the Torah because it is the force of Amalek that rises up against the very revelation of Hashem to Israel and to the world. There's Amalek who fights the knowledge of God, Amalek who tries to hide the knowledge of God. There's Amalek who shows the ultimate irreverence to the Torah, to the covenant. The rabbi said that Amalek would cut the uh, the, the, the Brit, the, uh, the, 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 the place of circumcision, and throw it up contemptuously in the air as if to deny the entire covenant with Israel. Amalek persecuted Israel, and we know the effects of Amalek in all the generations. And here the king of Israel was commanded to overturn the tables, to overcome this force of darkness and replace this force of darkness with a force of light. So was it surprising that King Saul was afflicted by the illness of Amalek, the illness of depression, after he failed to wipe out Amalek. And in the narrative which we have had from the book of Samuel about how David comes to play music to King Saul, in this narrative we see that the refu'ah, the healing to this illness, which is really the source of many, many other illnesses, it's the underlying source of so many symptoms that are the symptoms of depression that can overtake people and take over their bodies and take over their lives. The healing of this is surely something most precious to us. But what is the meaning of this idea that it is David who comes to play music to Saul? David, of course, is the author of the immortal and eternal Sefer Tehillim, the book of Psalms. And in Psalm 119, King David says something for which he was somewhat criticized by the rabbis. Zmirot hayuli chukecha vet mugurai. Your statutes were songs for me in the house of my dwelling. Have we heard from anyone of the great Sadiqim throughout the Torah that the laws of the Torah are songs? Have we heard such a concept from anybody that the laws of the Torah are songs? And indeed, King David was somewhat criticized as if he was being a little irreverent in referring to the mitzvot as songs. But the truth is that he was not being irreverent at all. He was trying to teach us that man's fundamental response to God's Torah is to be in the realm of song. God has commanded us to keep the commandments. He has commanded us to serve Him. He has commanded us to attach ourselves to Him. And how can we attach ourselves to God? To song. If you'll think about it, the larger part of our prayers in the Siddur are all woven around the songs of 